recently I finished reading this book here, The Path Work of Self Transformation by Eva Periakos, and I must say that this is one of the best books I've ever read. It is a channeled book and that may sound a bit airy fairy but and if it does please don't let that put you off because there's so much great content in this book. It talks about psychology, spirituality, terrific book, covers so many bases and on the back it says for more than 20 years Eva Periakos was the channel for a spirit entity known only as the guide. Combining rare psychological insight with an inspiring vision of human possibility, the guide's teachings, known as the Pathwork, have influenced many key New Age thinkers who have studied at the Pathwork centres in the United States and abroad. Now, the core teachings of the guide have been collected in one volume synthesizing the essential wisdom of the pathwork. And then it goes on to say under such headings as the idealized self-image, the forces of love, eros and sex, emotional growth and its function, real and false needs, the spiritual meaning of crisis, the pathwork outlines the entire process of personal spiritual development. Unlike many other idealised philosophies, the path work confronts our devils as well as our angels. Our all too often human failings and petty ego, ego concerns as well as our divine strengths. It shows us how to accept ourselves fully as we are now. And then to move beyond the negativity of the lower self that blocks our personal and spiritual evolution. It offers a practical, rational and honest way to reach our deepest creative identity. And just reading that has reminded me of a number of the chapters. So the real versus false needs chapter I found to be very good. And the accepting ourselves as we are now to be very good as well because it can be easy when we have a challenge and then to want to be somewhere else or to be someone else and this creates resistance and of course what we resist persists so all the time we are resisting where we are at we end up pushing what we want further away and slowing down our growth and this can seem irrational but once the nature of how manifestation works then it makes sense because if someone is coming from a place of resistance and discomfort then that's what they're sending out to the universe so they will get more of that so from that place it makes sense that what is resisted is what will persist and the meaning of crisis as well I remember that chapter well how crisis can be the chance to move forward to look at what needs to be resolved and to work through unresolved pain but of course when we are in a crisis it can seem to be anything but positive so now we'll just briefly go over the different chapters in the book as I was reading this book over a period of months I didn't read it in a month or anything like that and I really needed to take my time with this book because I found there was so much good content and I needed to reflect to practice what I'd learn so I can just burn through it. So the first chapter is what is the path? The second is the idealized self-image and again this can be relate to or this does relate to how on one level someone can have a very positive view of themselves but deep down they can feel very different and their reality can mirror back how they actually feel and what they actually believe about themselves. So it can be seen as beyond the persona. Or in astrology, beyond the ascendant. And the third chapter is the compulsion to recreate and overcome childhood hurts. And this is basically repetition compulsion, how as an adult 
we look for what we didn't get as children but of course we end up usually attracting the same kind of people so they can't give us what we want and as the stage is over anyway these needs have to be faced and grieved and then number four is real God and the God image number five unity and duality number six the forces of love eros and sex number seven the spiritual significance of relationship number eight emotional growth and its function number nine real and false needs as i said before this this is a very good chapter is a false need for example is something that someone didn't get as a child and then they end up looking for another adult to give them what their parents couldn't. So this could be unconditional love, for example. Or for someone else to always be available, to always be there for them. Number 10, infinite possibilities of experience hindered by emotional dependency. And then it says everything in the world exists in a state of potentiality. So it goes all into manifestation. Number 11, the spiritual meaning of crisis. And then it talks about the quote unquote dark nights. And then number 12, the meaning of evil and its transcendence. And it basically said that although evil does exist on one level, at its root, evil is just an expression of the creative energy. So Again, good and evil can be seen as duality. And then beyond duality, there just is. And number 13, self-esteem. Number 14, meditation for three voices, ego, lower self and higher self. Number 15, connection between the ego and the universal power. Number 16, consciousness, fascination, with creation and the last one number 17 creative emptiness and then it finishes with a meditation from the guide and I thought this was very profound so if you are looking to grow and expand and to work through your inner wounds and to become more whole and complete and you feel the call to read this book I think you will greatly benefit from it. And it says at the front of the book that this was written in 1990. So it's many decades old, but it is still such a great book. And a lot of the things in here, I'd say, are timeless. So you are surely going to benefit through reading this book. And as I said, it finishes with a meditation. And I will read this meditation now. It says a voice within, a meditation from the guide. And then it says, if you make yourself still and listen into your inner self, you will hear its voice. And it will say with variations, I am the ever loving God, the ever present creator, living within you, moving through you expressing as you in myriad forms as you and you and you as the animals as the trees and the sky and the firmament as everything that exists i shall dwell in you and if you allow me to act through you to be known through your brain to be felt through your feelings you will experience my power that is limitless. You will not fear this power that manifests on all levels. The power is great, but give in to me. Give in to this power, to this stream that surges forth, that will make you cry, and that will make you laugh both in joy. For you are me, and I am you. I cannot act on this level without you being 
and instrumentality for me. And if you listen to me, I will guide you through every step of the way. Whenever you are in darkness, you are away from me. And if you remember this, you will make steps to come back to me. I am not far away. I am right here in every particle of your being. If you thus fulfill my will, you and I become more one and I can fulfill your will. To find out more about the services that I offer and how I can assist you on your journey, go to www.oliverjrcooper.co.uk or email me at info at oliverjrcooper.co.uk I'm looking forward to assisting you on your journey.